Please stand. Welcome to our graduation service here at Great Plains for this year of 2021-2022. The order of service we're going to follow today is in your booklet. We'll continue now with the response of psalmody after the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. He makes my feet like the feet of He causes me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You make your shield on my shield, and your right hand sustains me. Your help has made me great. The Lord lives. Let us pray. Almighty God, you inspired Simon Peter to confess Jesus as the Christ and the Son of the living God. Keep your church firm on the rock of this faith, that in unity and peace it may proclaim one truth and follow one Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our first lesson for our graduation service today comes to us from the book of First Peter, chapter 2, Read verses 1 through 6. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, craves pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, Rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in Scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone. And the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For our second lesson today, we have a section of God's word from Matthew chapter 7. This is one of the other verses that the seniors had wanted to use as a uh, sermon text for today, but uh, works together and works well as a, a Bible lesson for us. And the sermon text that we do have is one that the seniors did get to choose, and uh, Pastor Schrader will preach on that one. But this is one of the other ones that came in a close second. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew against that house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house and fell with a great crash. This is the word of our Lord. We'll continue now with our hymn of the day.
me begin with prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear faculty, staff, family and friends of the graduates, students, especially you, graduates of 2022. So what were your plans for this year coming in? I haven't gotten to see all of you in the last two years. I saw a couple of you at Martin Luther College for basketball and a volleyball tournament. Um, but I didn't get to hear what all of your plans were. And last week, I was given the, the bulletin, the service folder that you have in your hands, and I got to look through it, and there's your pictures, your senior pictures in there. And I saw some of you definitely planned what you were going to do for your senior picture. Some of you had these amazing hand poses with your picture. You um, had some interesting things in the background. Um, one of you decided that you were going, and I think this was a very big plan, you were going to have a mustache as that was your big plan. Um, I didn't know if it was just drawn on or not, but I saw it in person, so I, I, now I know it's true, and congratulations, you won that. Um, but I, th I think the winner in your class is the one that had the dead animal skin that was draped over his shoulders. Um, I don't think that would have flown at my, at my high school, so I think you won, honestly. So congrats on that. What about your other plans this year? Um, did you have plans to continue in your good grades or maybe improve on them, get scholarships, um, maybe go on to, to win states or college, uh, go and make some new friends, maybe get some deeper relationships with the people you already have? How'd your plans go? Did all of the desires of your heart, did those all become fulfilled? Maybe, maybe some of them. But now I ask you, what about your plans for this next year and the years to come? And the question I want you to think about is, will you succeed? Your class verse that you chose and voted on was from Psalm 20, and it says, May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. When your graduation text was first sent to me a couple of months ago by your senior class president, when I saw it, I was like, this is very interesting. I had never seen a graduation preached on this text before, and I should have expected it was going to be different. I mean, you guys chose a cactus as your class flower, um, so I should have known something was going to be up with the graduation text as well, and I mean, it's a great choice, by the way. Um, but when I first saw this text, I thought, why this one? It, it almost sounds secular, worldly, like you would see it at some big, huge college graduation. They bring in this famous speaker, and he would say this to you. Um, you'd have this big rah-rah speech of, you just got to dream it. You got to do what you're going to plan to do. You're gonna, uh, you just got to love what you want to do. And it's like, okay, that's a a fine speech, but I don't think that's the one we're going to have today. But the more I looked at your graduation text, and I looked at the context of it, and I, I started to notice what it was really about. Psalm 20 was written by King David about a thousand years before Jesus was born. And you know David, he grew up as this lowly shepherd boy who became king of all of Israel. And, and David didn't stay as a lowly shepherd boy and this lowly shepherd king, he became a warrior king. And Psalm 20 is a dialogue between this king, King David, and his people that were left behind, the, the priests and people in Jerusalem, in this safe haven, and they are sending him off to battle. Because King David would go off and battle these nations that would wage war against the nation of Israel. They wanted to wipe out Israel, God's people. And so they are sending David off. And they say these words to him, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. They want him to do well in his battles. They want him to do well because that's God's plan, is to protect them. They want his military plans to, to work out. And so why is this text appropriate for your graduation? I, some of you 
might go on to do some military service. You might even serve in a war, but I don't think you picked it for that. I think it's because you are about to leave this place, this home base, a place that has um, some new walls, but some high walls that have been protecting you these last four years. God has blessed you with amazing teachers that have taught you his word. You've been able to grow and learn together in this wonderful, wonderful spot. But you're leaving. You're going out into the front lines. You're going out to battle. And I don't want you to be a casualty. I'm kind of weird. I like statistics for some reason. If you give me a box score of an NBA game, I'll look all over it. Uh, if you give me a newspaper with a bunch of statistics on it, I'll look at it, try to analyze it. Um, I have to admit that I was the last two years that I've been away from you guys, I would look at your box scores of basketball games and your volleyball matches and football games. and I don't know, it's weird, but I like to look at that stuff. But there's a statistic that I don't like. And it's one that has been consistent year after year. And when people take the statistic, it's when is the most likely time for people to fall away from the church? And you know what it is? It's these next four years. These next four years are the time when most people will stop going to church, stop believing in Jesus as their Savior. And as you go off into these, these new places, you're going to have many new temptations, new trials, and the devil sees an opportunity with you. He sees an opportunity. He's going to try to take it. And this might sound pretty scary, but do you know who the devil wants more than anyone else in the world? It's you. He has the rest of the world the unbelieving world, but he doesn't have you yet, so he's going to throw everything at you. He's going to throw every temptation, every trial, and try to make you slip up, try to make your plans with his plans. He's going to take your good plans and your good desires and try to twist them. We can see that already in our lives here on earth. I'll be the first to admit, you look at my plans, and are they godly or are they selfish? You look at my desires, are they good or are they sinful? But there was someone who had a perfect plan and he had a pure desire. God wanted you from eternity. He wanted you to be his own. His pure desire was to make you his own child. And as his child, he just wants you to succeed. And what is success? What is success to God? You learn about it here from your teachers every day in class. You had chapel every morning. You had devotions at night in the dorms. You went off to your home churches and churches in town. It's my prayer and prayer of your teachers and the people that are all here gathered with us today for you to be successful. What is success? I think it, you look at your theme for this year. Build on the rock. standing firm on that rock, the rock of Christ, the one who came down and lived among us, the one who lived a perfect life, the life that you know that you could never live, who his desire was to save you. His desire was for you to be his by going to the cross, nailing all of your sins to that cross and taking them all away. His perfection, yours. That was his plan for you and he wants you to be successful. He wants your plans, your desires to succeed because they are the same as his and that's to live with him forever. And that's yours. You know that. You learned that here day after day. But now you're in that in-between time. You know you have heaven, but you're definitely not there yet, are you? And so in this in-between time, as you have this reassert, reassurance as God's child, what's your plan of attack? What's your plan going out? Obviously, I want you to stay in his word. 
Obviously, I want you to keep going to church. But what about for this group right here? What are you guys going to do? I hope one thing is that you stay in contact with each other and you encourage each other. And whether it's a, a FaceTime call, a Zoom call, a text, a Snapchat, whatever it is, stay on top of each other and make sure that they don't fall. I want you to do that because these are some of your best friends, aren't they? You care about them, I think, at least a little bit. And so check up on them. Ask them how their life with God is going. Don't let them fall away. When you hear about bad things that happen in their life or in your life, reach out to each other. Love them enough like Christ loved you. Gave up everything so that he could save you. That's my, my task, my, my takeaway for you is love each other and keep loving each other in that way. And so as you go out into your different occupations, schooling, I hope God blesses the desires of your hearts and I hope he makes your plans succeed. But I hope you always remember his plan. When the struggles and trials come, these next four years and the years after that, I hope you remember that he is with you every step of the way. He loves you. He wants you with him forever. So I ask you one more time, will you succeed? You can say, absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Amen. At this time, we'll gather our offering. Our offering today is given to our Lord in support of our Great Plains Teens and Ministry Program.
Please stand. We'll continue now with the response of prayer of the church found on page four. Please join in with the section marked for you, the assembly. Loving Lord, you have brought us to the end of this school year by your grace. In the days, weeks, and months ahead, stay with us as you have promised. We thank you for Christian teachers, parents, and friends who have supported us in this past year. As we end this year of education at Great Plains Lutheran High School, lead all of us to remain faithful in worship, Bible study, and prayer. Help us to enjoy our work and time away from formal studies this summer. Keep us safe from injury and sickness. Father, into your hands, we commend all of our students who have sat at our tables and desks. Take all that we have and are and bless us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Please be seated.
I would like to thank, as noted in the service folder, those who have served us in this worship service this morning, Pastor Philip Schrader, our preacher, Reverend Tony Hansen, our liturgist, and our organist, Dee Dee Rosenthal. And then at this time, I would like to invite the senior class forward for their class song.
Each year, a representative of the, of the class has an opportunity to speak to and on behalf of the class. Oftentimes, that is the class valedictorian. As you can see from your program today, we have co-valedictorians, and so we get to hear from two individuals this morning. We'll do ladies first. It's my pleasure to invite forward Bryn Holman. Just in case. <laughs> Good morning and welcome again to everyone. It is a privilege to have the opportunity to speak to you today. Thank you all for taking time out of your busy lives to show us your support, not only today, but throughout the entire course of our time here at GPL. Your support has been a tremendous blessing, and I ask that you continue to keep us in your thoughts and prayers as we begin the next chapter of our lives. This class of 2022 has been here for the same amount of time as our principal, Mr. Bauer, and I'm fairly certain he can vouch for us by saying that since our freshman year, this class has done a lot of growing up. However, I'm quite surprised that even though you had to deal with us, you didn't lose your hair, but managed to grow it out instead. <laughs> so we must have become a little more tolerable here towards the end. While I was here, I was given several opportunities to let my light shine. Participating in numerous athletics and activities helped me to grow in knowledge, wisdom, skill, stature, and most importantly, as a child of God. I am so thankful for the countless memories I made during my time here. It truly has been so meaningful to spend these past four years surrounded by peers and teachers who share our faith. Through our training here, we were taught that as disciples of Christ, we will be attacked for our faith and challenged by the beliefs of others. So, class of 2022, I encourage you all to put up your strongest defense and stand firm in your faith, never losing sight of the ultimate goal that we have. It is a tremendous blessing for us to go out into the world as armed disciples of Christ. I pray that your lifestyle continues to be a reflection of the faith in your hearts and that not for a moment you forget the spiritual training you received here. I look forward to hearing about what God has in store for all of you in the future. As our class verse says, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. The origin of the word valedictorian is the Latin valedicere, which means bid farewell. Well, I knew it would happen eventually. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and being that this is the last time that we will all be together, I'm so honored to have the privilege of bidding you all farewell as we part ways and take the next steps into the next chapter of our lives. I can't even see my paper anymore. <laughs> so farewell, class of 2022. When you leave here today, celebrate what you have accomplished and look forward to the blessings in your future. I pray that no matter what role you serve, whether as a student, employee, son, daughter, sibling, friend, spouse, or parent, that you continue to keep Christ at the center of your lives. Thank you again, and God's blessings to you all. Thank you, Bryn. It's also my pleasure to invite forward David Sell. Well, guys, we did it. <laughs> it's a little less formal than Brin's, but we'll work with it. All right. Before I begin, I'd like to just give a thanks to my parents for supporting me throughout high school and making it possible for me to be here. I know they had to sacrifice a lot, including buying all the plane tickets. I'd also like to thank my grandparents for always being available whenever I needed them. Okay. Now, I wasn't too sure where to begin with this speech, so I'll just start at freshman year. Coming to GPL, I was not entirely sure of what to expect. I had two older brothers that had come here before me, so I knew a little bit about the drama that comes along with high school. But because my brothers don't tell me anything, I knew I was really on my own. <laughs> Walking into the dorm for the first time was a certainly overwhelming experience, but I was instantly greeted and welcomed right from the beginning. Now, speaking of dorm life, it certainly had its ups and downs. The opportunity to always be around the people closest to you 
as well as those that aren't close to you, is something I will never forget. <laughs> that being said, there were so many great memories within those walls. I will never forget the late nights playing games or all the times when we made Carla shake her head and move on with her life, never questioning what we were doing because she dared not to ask. <laughs> Being able to room with my best friend for three years was also a great blessing that many cannot claim. So Jackson, thanks for hanging in there with me. I can't say, I can't say it was all peachy, but for the most part, it was tolerable. <laughs> I would love to stand up here and mention everybody that dealt with me for the last four years, but that would take way too long. So I'll just say a thank you to everyone who made my time here enjoyable. The small school atmosphere makes it easy to try a multitude of things, in my time here, I believe I've tried every sport available to me at least once, including the all-important Nerf Club. <laughs> that would not be possible at a larger school. Another area worth mentioning is fine arts. Throughout my time here, I've enjoyed participating in band, choir, honor choir, one-act plays, and strings, as well as a trial run of jazz band that didn't end up going anywhere. <laughs> None of this would be possible without perhaps one of the most influential people in my time here, Mr. Martins. Throughout my time, he constantly put up with me and helped me on my way, sometimes because he was maybe a little fed up with me, but nonetheless, I appreciated all the time that he spent working with me and finding the mansions to stay in during choral and band fests. So thank you, Mr. Martins. Besides extracurricular activities, GPL provides an education that allows for students to excel. I enjoyed how easy it was to find and talk to teachers because of the small atmosphere. Half the time, I ended up bumping into teachers in the hallway during passing, even if I meant to or not. <laughs> but in all honesty, the staff here at GPL is wonderful, and the foundation in Christ is certainly unique. It's a great blessing to have been here throughout all the building projects and to see most of them get completed, even though it took way longer than we all expected. It was a pleasure to be in the new auditorium for the last couple of weeks, and I'm looking forward to what the future holds for me at WLC, and will certainly miss all the memories I've created here. Now to the class of 2022. As we look forward to college, I'm sure I'm not alone when I say there's a lot of uncertainty. I'm glad I had the opportunity to grow with you guys and start to figure this whole life thing out. I'm sure there will continue to be hardships in our futures, but remember that there is always one that you can turn to when times get tough. If we learned anything from GPL, I hope we at least know the love that our Savior has for us. As we go on our own separate journeys, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Psalm 20, verse 4. Congratulations, class of 2022. Thank you, Brendan David. David, this morning I took the last sign off the door, so if you feel the need to get one more cut across to the doorman before you leave, <laughs> it's all you. Class of 2022, congratulations on reaching this milestone in your lives. It's my prayer that GPL has been a blessing to you. I know you have been a, a blessing to GPL. It's my prayer that your time here has helped you continue to build your faith strong on the rock, Jesus Christ. I am confident that you are well prepared to continue walking and growing as disciples of Christ wherever the Lord leads you. Wherever the Lord leads you, may you remain strong in Jesus. All of you have successfully completed the course of study laid out by the GPL Association, which meets the standards of the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, the National Council for Private School Accreditation, the South Dakota Department of Education. So, it is now my privilege to present you with your diplomas. As you walk across the stage, I'll read the Bible verses that you've selected for this special occasion. So graduates, at this time, I invite you to stand, and then you can proceed over to the right side of the stage. Up here on the stage with me, we have board chairman, Rob Bush, GPL president, Pastor Mertz, obviously GPL dean of students, Tony Hansen, and also Pastor Schrader. Here we go. 
John Alfred Christian Abrahamson. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at last on the earth. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. Job 19, 25 to 26. Natalie Joan Ashton. <laughs> Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Samantha Jean Bendix. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Congratulations. Jackson Russell Coles. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Psalm 37, verse 4. Grace Almira Decker. For he says, in the name of my favor I heard you, and in the day of salvation I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. Gianna Renee Dennis Proya. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 4. Gavin Scott Dornbush. Don't let anyone look on you, down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Joseph Allen Erickson. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 to 39. Mariah Ann Fish. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has received what God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. Olivia Joanne Giovannitone. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31.6. Robert Harlan Goins. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden like a spring whose waters never fail. Isaiah 58, verse 11. Elijah Benjamin Grams. <laughs> Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. 1 Timothy 4, verse 12. Samuel Ethan Hansen. Whether you turn to the right or to the left, your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk in it. Isaiah 30, 21. Bryn Isabella Holman. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, Romans 8, 38 to 39. Lucas John Yeager. <laughs> my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. John 10, 27 to 28. Connor Jacob Kanas.
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Ethan Paul Jensted. <laughs> Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Proverbs 16, verse 3. Congratulations, Ethan. <laughs> Ethan, you left me hanging. <laughs> Vincent Peter Knudsen. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12, 2. Brooke Kathleen Lamley. For God, who said, let light shine out of the darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory, Displayed in the face of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4 6. Ruby Rose Leans. I do not trust in my bow. My sword does not bring victory. In God we make our boast all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Psalm 44 6 and 8. Trent Elmer Lean. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Psalm 111.10. Jenna Michelle Lindemann. <laughs> Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your paths straight. Proverbs 3, 5-6. Plamidi Kazadi Mutumbo. <laughs> Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1, verse 9. Suzanne Lusamba Mutumbo. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91, 1. Megan Mackenzie O'Farrell. <laughs> be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Madeline Rose Ramsey. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and him and in him all things hold together. Colossians 1, 16 to 17. Eliana Ruth Charlemagne. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 41.10. Paige Michelle Shore. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. David Christian Sell. <laughs> for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Allie Shea Smith. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Hebrews 13, 6. Brendan Allen Spurgeon is also a part of this graduating class. He's not here with us today, but let's give him a round of applause as well. 
And his verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through Christ who gives me strength. Caleb Anthony Wolf. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. 1 John 3, verse 1. Mally Marie York. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1, verse 9. Graduates, please stand. Please face the audience. As a symbol of your completion of high school, turn your tassel from the right side of your cap to the left. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you the Great Plains Lutheran High School Class of 2022. Once again, good morning to everybody. It is so awesome to have you all here today or watching if you're tuning in. What a, what a blessing it is to be able to gather together and, and uh, thank the Lord for the things that have been happening, including the graduation of this class. I'd like to uh, do a couple other thank yous to some others who have helped along the way. In addition to those noted in regard to the service itself, please, um, we offer our thanks to our technology coordinator, Ryan Rosenthal and to our office staff. They do a lot of things behind the scenes that, that you don't see necessarily, but it's, it's certainly appreciated. Karen, Sarah, and Angie, thank you for all your work. I would like to recognize at this time and thank all of the faculty and staff of Great Plains Lutheran High School. If you're here, wherever you are, uh, please stand. Certainly we thank all of you, and last night we had a special opportunity to thank those who are moving on, Becca, Anna, Tony, uh, and we wish you God's speed and God's blessings as you go on from here and continue to serve in different places and different ways. I would like to ask all of the board members who are here, some are up here, some are seated, seated with family, if you would please stand so that we can thank you for your service as well. <clears throat> And then I would like to especially note those who are completing terms of service. That includes Doug Arndt, Tim Leans, Phil Miller, Pastor Michael Newman, and Jonathan Wolf. Another thank you, uh, parents. Parents in general, but especially parents of this graduating class. Just We want to say thank you to you. Thank you for giving us the, the honor, the privilege of working with your children. Thank you for entrusting them to us and to our care, uh, sometimes for 24-7 throughout the school year and throughout the four years that they've been here. Thank you for, for that honor, for that trust, and we pray and we trust also that we have been faithful to that which you have given to us and that we have been a blessing to you and your family as well. But we just want to say a very big thank you because it's huge. It's huge. Thank you, parents. And to you, the graduates, one more time, thank you for being a part of Great Plains Lutheran High School. Thank you for making Great Plains Lutheran High School what it is. You are an important part of that. And I want to send you off with this. Um, do you remember what the theme was freshman year? 
If somebody said, be what God made you, Grace did it. Nice. Way to go. Be what God made you. These four years of themes can be an encouragement as you go your various ways today and in the days ahead. Four years ago, be what God made you. Three years ago, run with perseverance. Last year, our anniversary year, all to the glory of God, and of course this year, build on the rock. Keep on doing all things to the glory of God as you build on the rock, as you build on your Savior, Jesus. As the uh, graduates recess, um, they're going to have an opportunity to be greeted and congratulated by the faculty and staff. After that, they will be standing in front of their displays where you, the assembly, family, and friends can greet and congratulate them. About 20 minutes after that, we'll ask everybody to come forward, that is all the graduates, come forward for a group photo, so please don't leave before that happens. And then uh, just another thank you on the behalf of our school, our board, our faculty, our staff, our students and everybody involved, thank you for your support of and participation in Great Plains Lutheran High School. May God continue to go with each one of you and bless you. Thank you so much. So I'll ask the uh, faculty and staff and graduates to stand and then if you could proceed first and then they will follow. <laughs> 